Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be the Brandon Sanderson tag. And I think I was tagged like months ago by both Amber from Books of Amber and Angela from Literature Science Alliance and you know, I figured it was finally time since I just finished Rhythm of War yesterday, which was so good. But Brandon Sanderson is definitely one of my favorite authors, and this just seems like a very fun tag. Though some of the questions are like surprisingly difficult, so we'll go ahead and get started. So the first question is, uh, Brandon wrote many early novels while working as a night clerk at a Provo hotel. What book kept you reading late into the night? So as a side note, first of all, I went to University of Utah for undergrad and like BYU is kind of like the big hated rival. <laughs> so I have rather strong feelings about BYU and, and Provo in general, which I, I, I won't go into, but I just kind of thought that was funny that this like specifically mentions Provo. Anyway, I can't remember if it was like the first book or second book in the series, but I'll talk about the first one because I think that makes more sense. But this is the um, Dark Glass Mountain series by Sarah Douglas. So the first book is The Serpent Bride. And like I said, I don't remember if I was reading The Serpent Bride or The Twisted Citadel, which is the second book, late at night. But like, I don't know, in general, I go to bed very early and I don't tend to read books late into the night. Like I am pretty good about like a strict bedtime for myself, but like sometimes I have problems with insomnia, but I do specifically remember reading this series like really late into the night because I just couldn't put it down. But anyway, so Sarah Douglas has like almost like a Cosmere like world, I guess, where we've got multiple series, like there's the Wayfarer Redemption series, there's Threshold, which was a standalone, and I think it also combines, it's like Beyond the Hanging Wall or something like that, and then we have this Dark Glass Mountain series, which is like a culmination of all of these series. We have one character, Ishbel, who has like if, who is involved with a serpent cult that reads the future in the entrails of his human sacrifices. But the serpent has larger plans for her than merely being an arch priestess that calls for a royal marriage that's balancing on the edge between treachery and devotion and an eerie warning that's basically like prepare for the Lord of Elko falling. So then we also have like bringing in the world from Wayfair Redemption. We have a lot of characters from that series and basically we've got like a tyrant trying to get to reach for glory and then we have some characters from Wayfair Redemption that are pulled into a deadly dance of intrigue and sorcery. And then this Dark Glass Mountain is once known as Threshold, which is like one of the standalone books that um, I mentioned that like I absolutely love Threshold. It's kind of like an Egyptian inspired book and it's really cool. We've got a dark god rising from his prison and just like, I don't know, a whole bunch of stuff. So there's a lot going on here, but it is fantastic. And like, I think, you know, I don't know if I would necessarily jump in here, like, it was more exciting for me having read these other series and, you know, these standalone books where you have, you're, you're like, more familiar with the characters and, like, th Threshold in particular, and, like, I don't know. It's awesome, though, and I am so sad that Sarah Douglas died because she has written so many books that I love, and, like, I hardly ever talk about her on my channel, mostly because I don't think I have the books here, you know, to show you. The second question is, Brandon's complex magic system set his fantasy apart. What subject do you love to read about in all its complexity? So this was interesting. Like, I think there's a lot of series or a lot of subjects that I'm like particularly pas passionate about, but one in particular that I'll mention for this, um, this question is infectious diseases. Like, I love books that involve infectious diseases. And in fact, I actually have two nonfiction books that I haven't read yet, but it's Beating Back the Devil, and this is like about the epidemic intelligence service and just like different diseases and like trying to figure out you know like how they handled a variety of diseases there's like polio, West Nile virus, um, SARS, tuberculosis, malaria, you know things like that. I have the demon in the freezer and this is about smallpox I think. Yeah that's what it looks like. This seems to be about smallpox. I know he's written something else that's Ebola. I think that's the hot zone is about Ebola but you know like I don't read that many nonfiction books and for me to go out of my way to, and like granted again I haven't read these, but to go out of my way to pick up two books and probably even more depending on how this one goes, like it's definitely something that I'm really passionate about and like my actual real life research deals with infectious diseases, so it's something that I very much enjoy in my books, both fiction and nonfiction. 
The third question is, Brandon gets book ideas from watching other storytellers fail to execute a concept well. He figures out how to do it better. What two books handle the same concept in strikingly different ways and which do you prefer? So this might be mild spoilers for one of the books, so I'm just going to like kind of mention that book first and then like I'll put up like a spoiler thing so you can avoid it if you want to. And I like I don't think it's that big of a spoiler. The first book that I'll mention here is The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. So if you don't want any spoilers at all, skip ahead. And the other book that I will mention is, oh god, The Genius Plague by David Walton. So basically the sh shared theme here is a fungus <laughs> and that like kind of creates zombies. I don't know where my copy of The Girl with All the Gifts is. I may have unhauled it and I don't know. I don't remember. But anyway, I much prefer The Genius Plague obviously because I still have this one. So here, the genius plague, we've got our main character, Neil, who is a code breaker in the NSA, but his brother is a mycologist who studies, you know, fungus, and so he's collect this brother is collecting samples in the Amazon jungle, but basically returns with a gap in his memory and a fungal infection. And so once he recuperates, he has enhanced communication, memory, and pattern recognition. Um, but like at the same time, some things are happening in South America and others like this brother have fallen ill and have abilities. So basically these survivors are working towards a common and deadly goal and there's, you know, our main characters uncovering secrets, unexplained alliance uh, between governments that have been traditional traditional enemies and then, you know, this brother is increasingly secretive and erratic and sees this fungus as the next stage of human evolution. Can humanity use this force for good or are we becoming the pawns of an un utterly alien intelligence? So we've got this and then the girl with all the gifts is more of like a traditional zombie story, I think. Main character, Melanie, has, it just waits in her cell to be collected for class every morning. And you know, when they come to get her, she's trapped into her wheelchair. The sergeant keeps his gun on her. And like, you know, it's like, she thinks they don't like her. She just, she won't bite, but they don't laugh. Um, so she loves school and she tells her teacher about all the things she'll do when she grows up, but doesn't really know why. This makes her teacher look sad. So. You know, that's basically the synopsis there, but both of these are more, you know, I think both of them are obviously deal with some sort of fungus with some sort of zombie aspect. And I think The Girl with All the Gifts is more character focused. And I don't know, I just didn't love it as much as I thought I would. The Genius Plague is more of like a fast paced thriller and, you know, like we're obviously still focused on the characters somewhat, but I think it just the story drew me in a lot more here than the girl with all the gifts and so you know like i think this is just varies on like what you're looking for with your fungus story <laughs> your fungus zombie story this one i thought was much more chilling and just i don't know it was so much better for me so similar like basis of the zombieism but wildly different takes on it question four child brandon was recommended several books about dogs that die as a result he became a reluctant reader please share a formative good or bad childhood reading experience. So for this, I have like a few. So one of my aunts is actually a librarian and every time we would go out to visit them, we like, she would always check out books that she would thought she thought I would like from the library. And there would always be like a stack of books waiting for me. And I just like definitely remember one of the very first things I would, I would do every time, you know, like we arrived at the house is like run over to that shelf and see what books I, you know, I had available to me to read. So, and like, you know, my parents definitely read to me very early on and encouraged my reading, even though they're not like big readers themselves, they, you know, encouraged me to. So I have like a lot of good, I guess, experiences with that. <laughs> Another one that was kind of like, I guess, I mean, it's not really like a bad experience, just kind of like a mild annoyance. I remember being extremely annoyed about this when I was younger, but this was like first grade. And by that point I was like definitely reading very far ahead of like the rest of my grade. And um, there were like these Bob books, I think that were just like really basic things. And I was like, I just, like, why do I have to read this? I'm so far beyond this point. Like, what is this? And I remember, you know, like, my teacher was like had to explain to my parents like yes i know she's farther past this point i realize this but like we have to do it it's like a school requirement um but i remember just being like this is beneath me what is this bullshit i don't want to do this that was kind of funny and then you know with school there we had i think they were called like ar tests or something or like ar reading program something along those lines 
but you know it'd be like you read a book you take quizzes and stuff and then you could like work towards prizes and naturally like I crushed that I did a great job at that <laughs> Question five. Brandon and several friends host the You Writing Excuses podcast and they frequently invite guests. Please tell us about a collaborative fiction project and what you thought of it. So for this, I'm choosing Alona Andrews and this is actually a husband-wife writing pair and they've written so many books that I love and you know like for this like I could literally talk about any of them and they're just wonderful like there's the Kate Daniel series which is like an urban fantasy series kind of like in a post-apocalyptic Atlanta where you've got high-tech periods versus magic periods and you know like during the magic periods technology doesn't function during like the tech periods magic is a little iffy but there's the hidden legacy series which is more paranormal romance and that's in texas mostly and like i've talked about that fairly recently on my channel i think but there's also the innkeeper chronicle series and this is the one i was going to talk about a little bit more because i think it combines sci-fi and fantasy a bit more and that's more of like you know i thought it'd be kind of fun you know like not only is it a collaboration between this husband and wife pair but it's kind of like a collaboration between genres. <laughs> I love this series. It's basically we follow this innkeeper and it's this like magical bed and breakfast. It's supposed to be this lodge for otherworldly visitors. So we have you know like there's vampires, werewolves, but then there you can like travel to other worlds and there's like really awesome tech. There's spe special magic that our main character has because she's an innkeeper and like she can make specific rooms for guests based on you know like what they want and like their personalities things like that. I think most recently in the latest one there was like this like magical chicken group <laughs> that were like debating philosophy or something like that. So the first one I think there's something that's like trying to hunt at night and our main character is like getting involved because she feels responsible for her neighbors and then she's dealing with an alpha strain were werewolf who was her neighbor who's also this cosmic vampire soldier while well, trying to keep everybody safe and there's this enemy is you know very smart vicious lethal putting and you know it's like putting herself between the creature and her neighbors might cost her everything so I just love everything Alona Andrews uh, you know the, the pair <laughs> everything they do it is just the, the writing it just really speaks to me question six is Brandon's first book White Sand Prime was rewritten and eventually uh, yeah and eventually converted into a graphic novel called White Sand what book would you like to see in another format so this is a bit of a challenge I feel like there are so many books I would love to see in another format but I'm gonna choose Six Weeks by Murray Lafferty and this is essentially like a closed circle murder mystery in space with clones so here you know it's like I've got this lone ship, a murdered crew, and a clone who must find her own killer before they strike again. So, it's like, in the depths of space, it's pretty normal to wake up in a cloning vat. The streaks of blood, however, not so normal. So, our main character has been cloned before. Usually when she wakes up... Sorry, Samus is barking at who knows what right now. Usually when she wakes up as a new clone, her first memory is how she died, but this time she has no idea because her memories are incom incomplete, and she's not the only one to have died recently. So... I think that this is a really great sci-fi book. It's a standalone. It's, you know, like a murder mystery in space with clones. Like, it's so awesome. So I would love to see this as a movie, kind of like a Knives Out type movie, because I feel like that has a very similar vibe where this, you know, this closed circle murder mystery type thing. Now, I will say, I don't know how well it would be able to translate this whole clone situation and if, you know, you'd be able to, like, easily tell if it was, <laughs> like, which clone you're on. But I feel like that would just be super awesome and... You know, I think the thing with Knives Out was like, it was such a fresh movie idea that um, it just like it was so good. There was some humor to it. So I feel like, you know, just more, I don't know. I mean, I, I do love a good close circle murder mystery in general, but like more movies like that that are kind of more innovative and, and fresh would be awesome. And I feel like this would be a good option for that. The next question is question seven. Brandon writes very quickly, which prolific author or authors would you recommend? So for this, you know, again, there's a lot, but I think I'm going to choose Christopher Rocchio, and he's the author of Empire Silence. So I will say, like, you know, there's only three main books in the Sun Eater series out so far, but he has some other short stories and, like, um, novella type, type books. But he's been consistently writing these gigantic books, and they're, like, coming out every year. So, like, I feel like he will be pretty prolific, and, you know, we're just kind of early on in his career. But I just love this series so much and it like you know I kind of describe it as sort of like a King Killer Chronicles type vibe in space where you have this guy kind of recounting his life you know we we know he has basically you know destroyed this alien race 
um, destroyed the sun, you know, annihilated four billion lives, and even the emperor himself against imperial orders. So, you know, like, we know that this has happened, but we don't know the story up to that point. So he's recounting his life. And so here, it's kind of like a smaller scale on one planet. He's fighting as a gladiator, but then after that, like, it really expands where you've got, you know, like, actual space <laughs> and you're flying around and there's just been some incredibly shocking moments and you know like the most recent one there was like a straight up sci-fi horror scene and it was really awesome so I just really love this series but I hardly ever hear anyone talk about it other than like a handful of people so I really want more people to read this series I think it's awesome and I think you know it's he seems to have proven that he is going to write pretty consistently so yeah I'm excited for this series to keep going Question eight. Brandon's Cosmere Universe books are grounded in platonic philosophy. What book or series gets you really excited about the source material? I'm actually going to talk about The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. So I really love the Trojan War and this is obviously about Achilles. So it's obviously about Achilles growing up but we also have Patroclus and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. And so they're like brought together and form this bond, um, you know, follows their training and then obviously we've got the Trojan War happening and it's just such a lovely story and like I really also liked uh, Cersei by Madeline M Miller and you know she does I, I just enjoy mythology in general I do love specifically the Trojan War and reading this like it's just so wonderful there's like a just a touching romance and like obviously you know the general strokes of the story but how you get there is just very magical and I would definitely recommend her books Question nine, Brandon loves to show multiple sides of every issue and to contrast character values. Please share a book that handles controversy well. So this was actually really difficult to choose. And, you know, I think I'm going to talk about Ink and Bone, which is the first book in the Great Library series by Rachel King. So the, I guess, controversial topic here that it tackles is censorship. So basically we're in this like alternate world where the Great Library of Alexandria didn't burn down. And basically what's happened is this great library is the strict controller of, um, you know, the flow of knowledge. So we've got alchemy allowing the library to deliver the content of the greatest works of history instantly, but you can't, personal ownership of books is forbidden. One of our main characters, Jess, comes from this family that's kind of like a book smuggling family. And he's sent to the library as a spy and, you know, his loyalties end up being tested while he's training to enter the library service. One of his friends accidentally commits heresy by creating a device that could change the world and it's like, you know, just our main character discovers that those who control the great library believe knowledge is more valuable than any human life and soon both heretics and books will burn. So yeah, I think it's a really great exploration of censorship and just like controlling access to knowledge and books. I really love this series. It's super fun. I love this like alternate history world. The library is fascinating. We've got kind of some like magical aspects here then we also have like you know technology and uh, these inventions that the library is trying to suppress so yeah I just definitely love this series and would highly recommend it and finally the last question is question 10 Brandon Sanderson is a writing teacher and unlike some writing teachers he posts his lectures online for free what free literature resource are you grateful for so I mean there's several answers to this really but like I feel like you know first and foremost I definitely have to mention the library it's um, we have a really fantastic library here and I like, you know, like I, I do buy a lot of books to be fair, but I've been able to borrow ebooks, audiobooks, um, physical books sometimes from, from my library. And I think it's just such a great resource. Like not only are you able to borrow things, but often you can have like access to internet there and some libraries will do different programs to help people out and I feel like that's just such a great resource and you really can't go wrong with the library. Growing up I do remember going to the library a ton. We had like summer reading programs that I just like you know crushed. <laughs> that, was, that was my goal but um, I, I remember going for like I think they had snakes and insects for us like I definitely remember seeing a tarantula that they showed us at the library and it was kind of like an educational program for kids so that was super cool again I I, I realized I buy a lot of my books but I you know like not everybody can do that and not everybody wants to store a bazillion books so the library is such a great resource um also you know like I think Goodreads is like it has its, it, its flaws but it's sometimes useful for finding new things like I'll often find new books through giveaways that publishers host on Goodreads 
and then obviously like booktube is a huge free resource and i've you know been able to make friends here and just find people with similar tastes to my own so you know like if i haven't read something or haven't heard of something i'm like able to find that based on you know my friends here so so many great resources and it's just wonderful yay so with that those are all the questions for the brandon sanderson tag i think i will tag stephanie from miss richards reads justine from i should read that and marissa curtis so i think none of you have done it yet so hopefully you will enjoy this as well and yeah let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up and for your question of the day do you enjoy books that are based on mythology I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think we're going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.